Welcome and welcome back guys. So this is another tutorial looking at user interface, um, particularly loading screens, loading wheels. So there is really two types of loading wheels that you see everywhere. The, you know, the famous circular loading wheel. There's the more common one that you see when you try and refresh a page with like say Gmail and Twitter. If you are interested in learning that one, check out my other two tutorial on that. And in this one, we're going to be looking at the more standard loading wheel, the determinant wheel, as Google referred to it. Um, this one. So here's what our final product should look like. So this one only completes once, but it's just the kind of smooth action in which it does that where it starts with speed and then slowly fills up and feels quite nice and dynamic. So we're going to be doing this in Adobe After Effects. So let's create a new composition. And in your composition, set it up so we are a HD screen, which is 1920 by 1080 but we want to be landscape. So our width is going to be 1080 and our height will be 1920. The whole thing will be about, let's say, six seconds, six seconds. All right, so that's my screen. I'm going to drop a white backdrop on. Solid. Set that to white. Cool. All right, then. So we are going to be using the ellipse tool, which is in here. And we want to create a circle. So we're going to create a circle. And if you hold shift mm -hmm. while you do so, the circle should come out perfect. So let's just set this up so we can see it and I'm going to add a stroke to it. About about 20 should do. We reposition this so it's sent more or less centrally. Um, that'll do for now. We want to get rid of this middle part because the loading wheel doesn't have this. So I'm going to go to my ellipse settings, find fill, and drop my opacity. So we have no fill. All right, we want to add an effect on this, and we're going to click on the add and find one of the presets. And we're going to go for offset paths. Oh, wait, no, trim paths. I think it's offset paths. I think, no, it's trim paths. Um, awesome. So we only need the end and the offset. The whole animation is roughly done in three seconds. Three seconds. So at this point, we want a full rotation. If I drop this just for a minute, um, what you'll see is as I'm rotating this, this the offset in itself almost rotates the circle. So imagine you're picking up the whole circle and moving it around. That's what that does. And we want this to complete one lap. And the end controls, so let's find a start. So there's start and end. So if, just for point of example, if I move this, you see how the left hand side's moving around? And start would obviously be the other side. Cool, but we are going to just keep our start point, the end, the start point the same the whole time, we're just going to manipulate our end. So, delete that, it needs to put it down, and here it will be 100, and here it will be nada. So, if I press play, cool, that looks alright. But it's not quite got that same spark. So we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're going to be editing these keyframes to add some velocity to them and change the way that they work. So the first thing we are going to do is change the speed of our rotation. So we want the rotation to go relatively slow at first and then fast towards the end. 
and we're going to be using our graph editor. So select the pins or the layers that you want to be working on. So I'm just going to select this one and this icon here, graph editor, will bring up something that looks like this. So we've worked with the pen tool before. Um, and in the pen tool, if you hold Alt you, and hover over, your thing will turn to like an upside down V. That's what we want. And it allows us to drag out these arms and set various paths and speeds. So almost imagine this like a roller coaster and momentum. Like something like this is longer and thinner, so it's going to take longer to sort of speed up and do its thing. And you know, the different sort of paths are going to affect the velocity. But instead of me trying to explain that, let me show that to you. So if we set our point along over here, let's see what happens. So you see how it goes slow at first and then speeds up towards the end. What about if we were to set it the opposite direction? Oh, way up here. Really fast at first and then slow towards the end. And that is already the kind of thing that we want. But we actually don't want that much. We want a little bit, but not quite that much. And we're going to do... Pull out our arm a little bit over this side too. Just to smooth enough that motion. Nice. So, that's quite good. I don't like that it starts, I kind of want my start point to be up here. So let's exit our graph editor and go to our end point and play with that as well. So we're going to do a similar thing, grab the arm and pull that point and let's see what happens. Look at that, you see how it stays smaller for a lot longer and speeds up towards the end. What about if we were to put it the other way? It's quite good too. But this one, we want it to be a bit more subtle. Nice. Tweet this until you're happy with. Nice. And again, just to mention that I don't like how it almost looks like it's starting around this point. So I'm going to move my offset forward a few frames. Ugh, that looks terrible. It goes way too fast now. To that start point. But ultimately, at least it sort of looks like it's starting from the top. So I'm going to go back into my graph editor. And pull this down a bit. Let's see how it looks now. Still too fast. Like right that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, okay. can we do this? Hmm. Is that better than this? Yeah, that's a lot smoother, a lot prettier. That's good. I think ultimately though, I would like it to be a bit smaller for a bit longer. So I'm going to slow down my end on the graph. Bit more towards that, let's see that. Nice. Cool, and I am happy with that. It looks like it starts from the top. 
we've got all that motion and using the graph editor we can really get quite precise keyframes you know it's like keyframes will change from diamonds to um what look like egg timers that lets you know that they've got effects on there which you could see in your graph editor and overall it looks really good so we, let's do our finishing touches by we're going to create another ellipse create another ellipse drag it down so you can see it this is where what our thing's going to sit on v to switch back to your arrows the scale of that thing is way off my i need to move my anchor point as well so i'm going to press y and bring my anchor point up to my center press v to come back just when my anchor point was off you see how my scale it moved down instead of moving inwards find a point where it sits perfectly in the middle more or less, that looks good cool um my fill should be white don't want any stroke and the way we're going to make this stand out is what google do anyway is they use a drop shadow I put my I put my drop shadow on the wrong layer. Right, let's try this again. Let right click lifestyles drop shadow. Cool. We can tweak this. The past um, angle wants to go straight down. It's a ninety. We don't want this really thick sharp shadow. What we want is something with a bit more distance bit more size and spread to make it look softer. Make sure that opacity is around 40%. And deselect it so we can get a nice view. Excellent. Job is a good one. So get a top layer. Parent it to here. And what we're going to do is take a shape, just throw a nice basic position thing down as if we're pulling down. Throw it up, hold shift to pull up. Like in the other tutorial, going to overshoot a bit so it comes back up. Cool. And this point, we are going to change our opacity. Now we've completed. After a second, fade out. Not just. And we're going to do the same thing to this layer. So find a start point. Opacity on. Up to zero, feed out. Cool, let's see how the whole thing looks. Nice, pretty good, pretty happy with that. I mean, the bounce could be smoother on the position. So let's do that. This time, instead of going into my graph editor, I'm just going to right click and say keyframe assistant, put easy ease on. That's going to slow it in, slow it out. Give it that bounce. Awesome. I think that's happening just a couple of frames too soon. Nice. Excellent. So I hope you enjoyed that and you can utilize it in whatever awesome app making experiences you're going for. Thanks for watching guys and hope to see you soon.